guys, I'm Alex with Techmetric. I'm here with Hunt DeMars from Power Mellison Associates based in Maryland. You guys might be familiar with them, might not, but we wanted to get together with their firm to go over some questions we often get and how Techmetric can help benefit you guys in conjunction with the accounting process. Hi Hunt, how are you doing today? Pretty good, pretty good, how are you? Good, good. So thanks for taking the time to meet with us. We wanted to ask you some questions on our first topic in this series of why should a shop switch to accrual-based accounting? So my first question around this is why do some shops use cash basis in the first place versus accrual? Gotcha. Yeah, and so cash basis is something that we see for a lot of shops. I mean, I think that really it starts out, you know, a lot of people, you know, started these shops from nothing, right? Started building the business, then getting a little bit more complicated. You know, maybe some of these people didn't even have a shop management software, really any accounting when they first started. And so a lot of these things were just an afterthought. You know, cash basis accounting is much simpler to do because there's no sort of adjustments. If it comes into your bank account, it's income. If it goes out, it's expense. We don't have to worry about accruals. We don't have to worry about matching it to the periods. I think really it just happens for simplicity's sake. But then obviously what we see is a lot of people then outgrow that or, you know, they should have outgrown that and they still remain on cash basis. So what are some of the problems with cash basis and the problems that that creates? Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, so the biggest benefit of cash basis, like I said, is the simplicity of it, right? We don't have to worry about making sure that things are in the proper categories. It's just there. It's easy. It's straightforward. You know, it's what we call checkbook accounting. What's in your bank account? You know, it's a way that a lot of people used to do it. I got money in bank account. Everything is looking good. Um, you know, there's a couple of different things that really kind of mess you up when you do it that way is we're ignoring expenses that we have not yet paid. And so, you know, what we see in this industry a lot, you know, we work with about 600 repair shops on a monthly basis. So we have a pretty unique perspective of seeing pretty much all sizes, shapes, types of shops. But one of the biggest things that we see is cash flow issues, right? And so if you're using a strictly checkbook based uh, method of accounting and you look at it and you say, all right, I got $20,000 in my checkbook, but we're not accruing payroll, we're not accruing parts bills, we're not accruing any of these things. You know what, if that $20,000 could go away pretty quickly, maybe that's sales tax, maybe that's your payroll taxes that you haven't paid yet. Maybe you have a Napa bill for $15,000 that when that finally hits, it's gonna pretty much take all that money out of your bank account. So the biggest thing of why we wanna see on a cruel basis is we wanna match up the income and the expenses when they're actually happening. Um, the big ones that we see a lot, you know, I know a lot of people that buy a part to put on the car and maybe if you don't have terms on it, you're paying for that the next day. You know, for smaller brake jobs and stuff like that, it's probably fine. Maybe on a daily basis, it might be a little bit off, but it's going to give us pretty accurate numbers. Um, the big thing that we see issues with is larger purchases. So if you have open terms with your uh, parts vendors, you're probably not going to pay a parts vendor at all the entire month. And then the following month, you're going to have to pay for all of those parts. And so if you're not accruing those expenses, if you're not tracking those expenses, you really don't know where you stand until you finally pay that parts bill next month. Um, another thing that we see a lot is, you know, if you're doing engine transmission jobs, something like that, where you're buying that stuff up front or that cost is getting accrued up front, and then you end up turning down, down a road maybe two to three weeks later when it finally comes in and installing that part. You know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to minimize the variables here. We're trying to make sure that the financials make sense, that we don't see these huge swings. And if you're doing cash basis, it's just by design. You're going to have huge swings. It's going to all of a sudden show that you're making a ton of money. And then that week, the payroll hits, your parts vendor bills hits, you know, whatever it might be. All of a sudden, it's going to show that you're losing a ton of money. Generally, over the course of the year, all this stuff kind of works out. It's all going to be in there. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to set this up so that it's usable financial statements so that it makes sense. And so we can see some real time numbers here. So even if the reasons why cash basis might be bad don't make enough sense to you. What are some of the reasons that people usually switch to accrual based accounting? What are some of those triggers that make people go, oh, I really like now's the time that I really need to move over to accrual and make that switch? Yeah, I think the biggest thing on a cruel basis is a lot of people getting educated on it. You know, I don't think that a lot of people even realize that there's essentially two major methods of accounting, which is cash and a cruel basis. And when we start working with a shop and we start getting them to look at their financials and start setting these financials up correctly, they now know what we're talking about, right? If we're talking cash or cruel for most shop owners, they're like, hey, this is why I pay an accountant. I'm not messing with that. But if we show them the financial statements and say, all right, you made 85% parts margin last month 
and they're going to immediately say, okay, that's because I didn't pay any of my parts bills last month. And they start to see the importance of matching this stuff up so that these financials that they're looking at are accurate. Um, and obviously, you know, as they get more involved in the numbers, you know, maybe at first they don't get this, but as they try and get these and dive in more and more, they start seeing some of these glaring issues just because of, you know, the cash basis method. And so one of the biggest things I see on a cruel basis is, you know, there's a cruel basis like we're talking about for a shop and there's a cruel basis like we talk about for Fortune 500 companies. You know, if it comes down to the, you know, detail of this stuff, you can spend a ton and ton, a ton of time accruing every single expense by the day, by the week, by the month. Really for shops, that is completely overkill. We want to really be accruing, you know, a, a couple major pieces here. So the first one that we want to accrue is first and foremost is invoices. I don't care when I got paid for that invoice. I need to match it up with the time that that job was done, completed, set out. You know, whether that's a day, whether that's a week, we want to make sure that those invoices are on the correct date. Now, correspondingly, we want to make sure that the cost of goods sold match up on that. So if you have a parts vendor that you don't use very much, that you pay two, three, four, five hundred bucks every couple of weeks, I'm probably not worried about making sure that that's on the exact same date. The biggest thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that our big parts vendors are on there. So whatever your main supplier is, that needs to match up exactly so that we can get this. Um, what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to eliminate variables. If we're looking at the numbers and they look high, they look low, and we're not doing a cruel basis, then we're going to chalk up anything good or bad that we see as it's probably a timing issue. Um, you know, really the last thing that I see some people talking about and some people asking is accruing payroll. That one can be a bit tricky. Most of my shops do not accrue payroll. It seems to be pretty standard for most people. If you pay out sizable commissions and stuff like that, that will affect it. We do sometimes accrue those, but I think sometimes people get, um, you know, a little bit hesitant about this because they think that this is going to be a ton of work on their behalf. When in actuality, if we're focusing on the major items, this is not a major change. It's just a different way of doing things. Awesome. So how long does it take in general for a shop to switch from cash basis to accrual? Um, you know, it's as far as a day to day and procedural type issue, this is something that can be done pretty quickly. You know, like I said, we're going to hit the major items. Uh, the biggest thing for a lot of people is probably going to be the sales side of it. A lot of people recognize their sales as they recognize their deposits. And so by either using accounting link back office or some sort of manual entry to tie tech metric into their QuickBooks, you know, once you get the hang of that, that's done pretty quickly. Uh, for the parts bills and stuff like that, it's just a metric of how we're putting that into QuickBooks. So instead of putting a check in there on the 10th of the following month, you can either just move that check ba back and date it for the end of the previous month where it was really you know, incurred, or you could turn around and you could just enter a bill into QuickBooks and then turn around and pay the bill. Um, so really, you know, this is something that, you know, on the surface to get going on it, it's pretty quick and easy to do, you know, as you get through and as you get more and more complex on what you're accruing, you know, it's probably two month, three month process to try and figure this out, but it's not a massive undertaking. Awesome. Well, that was very helpful. A great overview of the pros and cons. Really, it sounds like more pros to accrual than cash basis. Any last thoughts that you want to add to our mutual users? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things that we see and why it's useful is, you know, what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that, you know, our two pieces of software, our two financials are matching. And so obviously Shop uh, Techmetric gives us really good end of day reports, shows us what we think we're making on our margins, you know, and, and really what we think, you know, overall gross profitability looks like. And really what we're trying to do here, especially by going to a cruel basis, is making sure that QuickBooks is telling the same story. Because if I'm showing 50% margin on parts in Techmetric and I'm showing 30% parts in QuickBooks, I need to figure out why those two are different. If we're not posing these in the same exact method, then it's never gonna compare. We're never gonna be able to figure out if we have a disconnect, if we have a pricing issue, if we have a theft issue. So just trying to make sure that those two systems, you know, tie and mesh well. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Hunt, for taking the time to give an overview of all of this. If you guys are ready to learn more about accrual basis, how you can switch and need help with that, definitely reach out to us or Hunt and the team at Parmelis and Associates. Thanks. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up and to share it with the rest of your team. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you would like to see more helpful videos for auto repair shops. Have a wonderful day.